Hi, ma'am. Uh, can you tell us something about the event? About this event? Yes. Uh, so the event that we did today was like a cocktail masterclass with a handful of media people. So we walked through kind of the, a brief history of the cocktail and then we went through a couple of drinks based on trying to educate them about certain techniques and how to balance flavors more, most specifically. So afterwards when they made their own, um, they were able to make a well-balanced cocktail that they could actually make later on for their friends. How long have you been doing this uh, Curator Cocktail Masterclass? Uh, this is the first one I've done with the Curator. Um, I've been doing cocktail masterclasses I think maybe for the last kind of five years. Um, maybe longer, ever since I really started bartending. I guess you kind of, you almost offer, or I always have, you almost kind of offer a masterclass to your guests as they come in. So. You've done a lot of tricks, I guess, about doing drinks, right? So, what are your favorite uh, cocktails? My favorite cocktails, I love La Paloma, which is a tequila cocktail, like tequila and grapefruit and lime, a um, little bit of salt maybe around the rim. Um, other cocktails I love, I love a good Ramos Gin Fizz, which is actually quite a hard cocktail to make, so using cream, um, a cream and gin and lemon. How would you compare uh, Filipino bartenders from other bartenders around the world? I really, I have a lot of heart for the Philippines. Um, I wax lyrical about certain people in this industry. I think as a whole, um, or especially with your more independent cocktail bars, that culture is growing quite organically, and the people that are really at the forefront of it are driving it through passion alone, which I think is fantastic. Um, the, the top bartenders in the Philippines, I don't doubt, could hold their own in some of the best bars in the world. I think, yeah, and I think over the next kind of five to ten years, that'll that'll really develop, that'll really grow, and it'll be something quite amazing. How do you, how do you elevate this craft, this um, uh, bartending? I think the easiest way to elevate bartenders and elevate um, bartending is through cocktail competitions. So when you're competing in cocktail competitions, um, obviously that puts you, at least on a local level, that exposes the bartender itself. And then when you're doing more global cocktail competitions, say something like we do with Diageo World Class, then that really exposes them on a global level too. So that's a really easy, or quite quick way to elevate the bartending as a whole. For you, uh, for you, uh, how uh, how does someone impress you with his skill as a bartender? What makes you, you know? I'm service first, so. Um, the, I think the experience that you create for your guests is the most important. If I can go into a bar, and the bars that I go into the most are the bars where usually they know my name, and I feel comfortable, and I feel like I can have a conversation with the bartender. I'm not all that fast, like if I get a bad drink to start with, um, so long as I can have a conversation with them or we can change it. I'm, I'm really not that bothered by it, it comes down to the actual person themselves, and I guess their own hospitality. What do you think is the future of this uh, bartending thing? I think bartending is very similar to fashion in that sense. I think trends go in circles. So there will come a point where you can't really evolve any more than what you have and then it will kind of go, start to go back around again. Um, yeah, trends are constantly changing and you're constantly being influenced by a number of different things. You can have local bartenders being influenced by, say, local flavours or things that are happening more on a kind of a country-based level. Um, then you can have trends that are obviously things you're exposed to on a global level or things, that you've, seen, things you've seen overseas that you've brought back. Um, but yeah, I, I think bartending is constantly evolving, but at the same time, it's evolving with people kind of going back to older trends, like older things that they've seen too. So. As a brand ambassador, what do you usually do? What What are oh, your I'll tasks? Things. <laughs> so I do events, a lot of event type work. Um, here in particular, I do. I obviously look after Diageo World Class, um, which is our global cocktail competition. Um, then I do a lot of trainings. So a lot of trainings more with people. Eat, as basic as say teaching them about spirits, like what is a spirit or basic cocktail making. And um, then we do some more advanced table type trainings too. So training, events, probably the majority of what I do here.
you've also done bartending, I think. Yes, for a very long time. Can you tell us something about that? How long you've been doing that? How young are you when you tried bartending? I first started bartending in a pub with um, one of my best friends, a guy called Tor Berquist, who is an exceptionally talented bartender. And I probably owe it to him that I wound up in this trade. So he went on to do some amazing things and work in some amazing places around the world, so in London and New York. Um, and now he's back in Australia, and if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have fallen into it. Um, I also owe me getting into bartending probably to another gentleman called Timothy Martin, who's one of my closest friends. And he owns a bar in New Zealand now, and when I worked with him at Mia Copper, he probably kind of opened my eyes, and that was the point when I decided to stop studying and stop working in other jobs and really concentrate on bartending as a whole, or on this, the alcohol industry, because that was what I was passionate about. What's the worst thing about bartending? You've mentioned a lot of pros eh? in your own experience. On the um, for me, I think as I'm getting a little bit older, it can get a little bit. It, you can get quite tired. Like you're definitely you're not as young as you used to be, so you can't party as hard. You know, you can't be out or working till six in the morning. It's not as easy to wake up at nine anymore. But you do it for the love of it, and I, I genuinely. I absolutely adore people and I love the rapport building side of things, I love the relationship side of things. So for me, like coming into a bar and being able to serve people and host people and create an experience for people I think is so rewarding that there really isn't a downside to it, um, but it's each to their own. So everyone has something that they might not necessarily like. Um, the, my, my Honestly, like citrus, so I have really sensitive skin, um, citrus and the fact that it actually burns my skin would probably be the only thing I could complain about. So. Um. Are you a fan of movies? Movies, yes. Uh, have you seen any movies with bartenders? Hey, bartender? Yeah. Any favorite movie with a bartender role? That would probably be it. So, there's a fantastic bartender in New York called Steve Schneider, um, and he features in this movie called Hey, Bartender. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you see it. Um, it basically follows his life and how he got into bartending. It's a really inspirational story, and he is one of the most humble people I've had the pleasure of meeting in this industry. Um, yeah, if you if you haven't seen it, watch it, you'd love it. And it's a really good way to kind of get people to understand exactly why we do and how we do what we do. When was it released, that movie? Last year, this year. Was it released internationally? Yeah, you can find it online. I think you can download it from the iStore on Apple. Mm -hmm. What makes a better bartender? a good bar bartender aside from the skills you gotta have heart like you've gotta have heart you've gotta love what you do like you can be the best bartender and if you don't love what you do and if you don't care about your guests you're a horrible person to sit in front of like you the guest is the guest the person who's sitting at your bar they're the most important like to me that is that is more important than any skill or any any fancy things that people can do it's about how you interact with your guests, it's about the service that you provide. We're a service industry, that's first and foremost, like it's what you want. You know when you come into the bar, whatever you want, it's not what I want to make for you, it's what you want. I want you to have the best time, I want to host you in the best way, I want you to leave here and be like, oh, I love that place, like they're so nice and they took such good care of me and I had such a great experience, you know, and that to me is more important than how great the drink is because the skill, the skill level that comes, you know, but the love and the passion for it, like, yes, you can definitely help help nurture that in people, um, but it's not. I don't. I don't ever think I have it as pleasant as a, an, as an experience um, going into someone's bar if they're not hospitable as they do when they are. How can someone join this competition? What are the requirements? Join the Archie World Class. Yeah. Or this curator cocktail master class? Oh right. Um, so the master classes, I think you just talked to Jico and Tiff. I think they run them. They're happy to kind of put cocktail classes together and run them here. Um, I just I just talked to those two to join Diageo World Class. So to join our kind of cocktail competition. I'm honestly like personally, I'm open to anyone joining it. Um, if you're a slightly more junior bartender, perhaps you might not do as well, but you'll definitely learn a lot. So. I think, yeah, if you want to, like, there's always a way to do it. Is it uh, okay to mention some of your favorite bartenders? Do yeah, you have any sure. favorite? Definitely. Do you mean in the Philippines or do you mean Anywhere. internationally? Philippines and abroad. So, 
the two that I mentioned earlier, so Tor Burquist and Tim Martin, absolutely some of my favourites. Um, Steve, also fantastic bartender. It's, but there are so many people recently, like so many people that have so much heart and so much love for what they do. And to me, the people that are the most humble are definitely the people I enjoy spending time with the most. Um, but there's a wonderful, there, in fact in New York there are some phenomenal bars and all of them are packed with just the most in, insanely talented and exceptional bartenders, like people that I look up to and think, you know, like hopefully one day if I go back to full time bartending I could be anything like what they are, like the, the whole team at the Nomad Hotel are phenomenal, um, the whole team at EO are phenomenal, um, employees only, uh, so many more, like yeah, Extra Fancy, Death and Company, Every bar I've been to in New York, I think I'm really impressed with the people that are there, the, everyone that's there. Every, in fact, in America alone, I don't know, every, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I only, I spend a lot of time in very good cocktail bars, so I really get to go into a bar where I'm not impressed with the, impressed with the staff there, but Tor, Tim, um, Steve, uh, a good friend of mine in Singapore is a guy called Stenek Kastanek, um, he is probably one of my mentors, probably my current mentor, he's insane. Like, the amount of passion and love that he puts into his job and he inflicts into others and he's just relentless. Like, that guy works 24 hours a day and his passion is infectious and he would probably be one of, yeah, I, I don't have like a particular favorite favorite, but he's, if, if I did, like, he'd probably be it. Like, I think that guy's just, legendary and there are, there are so many people like that you know it's just that he you have I happen to work with him the closest at the moment if it was anyone else I think I'd probably feel the same way so thank you very much Mom. that's all right yes thank you